you guys kind of have your um, assignments for the for the next two weeks before our next group call. I, I definitely want to follow up with you guys at the end of this week to see how we're doing. And then on our next group call, we'll see how we're doing with those two things. All right. So I'm going to move on to, I'm going to get this on my screen. You guys can still see me, right? Okay. So I'm going to talk about just our relationship with food and why it's so important to just get out the mindset where a specific diet or cutting out a specific food group is going to help us in the long run. You know, for a really long time, everyone say, you know, go keto, go vegan, go vegetarian, you know, go high fat, go carnivore. This is how you'll lose weight. The answer isn't what specific diet you follow to lose weight. It's what you can stick to long-term. Um, I know right now this isn't so much of an issue for us that are on medication because our issue is getting more food into our bodies, but I'm thinking long-term. So I don't know how long you guys plan on staying this medication or if you guys just want to eventually do a maintenance dose once you reach your goal weight, but it's important to have a healthy mindset around food because this is what's going to keep us healthy and keep us at our weight long-term. So we don't have to continuously diet or continuously get on medications. And it's our relationship with food is, that's going to help build lasting results. So one of the things that I want to go over is food neutrality. And I touched on this earlier, but essentially don't label anything as good or bad. So if you ever, you guys hear it and you've probably done it yourself where, oh my gosh, I'm so bad. I had two slices of pizza and I had some ice cream. Oh, I'm so bad. You know, this is just, I want you guys to get out of this mindset because thinking this way is just going to lead to guilt and restriction and just very unhealthy habits that we are going to continue to do. How many of you have gone, oh, I ate so much yesterday. I have to do an extra 30 minutes of cardio today. And I don't want you guys to get out of this mindset. It, essentially all foods do fit into a healthy lifestyle. So as I touched on earlier, you can fit anything in, just all your sweets, all your carbs, as long as everything, I always say everything in moderation. For the most part, the rule of thumb is I want you guys to eat 80% healthy most of the time and then leave the 20% to special treats and things that you do want to eat. And I know, again, right now, this isn't an issue for the both of you or for anybody in general, because our main struggle is just um, getting food in to begin with. But again, this is for the future. And this is if you do have these cravings, because- um, sometimes people will, or then this usually happens toward the end of like towards the end of the week, almost before shot day, where someone will say, you know, one or two days before, before, uh, shots, they'll start getting hungry. And then people will start getting scared. They say, my hunger is coming back because shot day is coming up. I don't want to eat this piece of cake and this hamburger. And that shouldn't be the mindset anyway. You should just say, I'm going to eat this cake and this hamburger. I'm not going to feel guilty about it. And I'm going to move on with my life. And they don't have to exercise to get rid of the calories that they ate. You should be able to eat those things without feeling guilty. Another thing that I wanted to touch on is just reframing carbs. So a lot of people think that carbs are the enemy and that you are not supposed to have any carbs at all. And carbs, you should just have carbs as little as possible. But carbs are important because it's an essential nutrient that's going to fuel our bodies and our brains. So if you've ever been on a keto diet, some people get the keto brain fog. You can't think straight. I've done low carb myself and just being on a low carb diet, I have zero energy and like my attention span is very short. So carbs are important and they have a place. You want to think of carbs though, carbs, there's the simple carbs and there's the complex carbs. So complex carbs provide sustained energy. And these are things like oatmeal, whole wheat food, brown rice. These are things that can sustain you throughout the day versus fast, um, simple carbs, Simple carbs are like the white cakes, the donuts, the white rice and things like that. And I'm not saying to never eat simple carbs, but you want to you want to focus more on whole grains and the complex carbs. 
Um, and you just have to find the balance that works for your body. And there's such a thing as carb cycling, where when you get more advanced in your workout program, if there's days when you feel like eating lower carbs, great. But if there's days that you feel like eating higher carbs, you can do that too. There is a balance for both. The third point that I want to make is I want everyone to move away from diet culture. So diet culture, you see it in the news and you see it in newspapers and not newspapers, but in like online and everything, this is the new fad diet. And I think right now I'm hearing is the carnivore diet. The carnivore diet is it. This is how you're going to lose weight. Eat like a caveman. So there's always a new fad, always a new book, always something about the latest and greatest diet. But again, I want everyone to move away from all of that and just try to reduce all of that noise. Sustainable weight management is, it's not about following rigid rules. So it's not about just doing, you know, all carnivore diets, not just doing, you know, high fat diet. It's nothing rigid. You want to listen what the end goal for everyone when you get off these medications or when you are, you know, deciding to get on a maintenance dose from these medications is you want to be able to listen to your body and its hunger cues, hunger and fullness cues. So that's the key and that's the end goal. And that's why I think right now is like such an ideal time for you guys to start eating nutritiously and more healthy and finding out what works well for your body. Because if you find, you know, for example, me, when I eat very oily foods, like if I just have like a Chick-fil-A nuggets, I feel terrible. My GI tract is off the track. My energy levels are low. So while you guys have lessened appetites. I want you guys to learn to listen to your bodies and find out what foods work for you. For example, if you feel like if you eat a donut um, an hour or so later, you're not going to feel you're not going to feel as energized versus if you eat something that is uh, that that's whole wheat and has protein in it. You'll you'll have more sustained energy. So I want you guys to listen to your bodies and listen to what your body says when you eat specific foods. And that's why I think keeping a journal too, when you can, even if it's the notes app on your phone about how you feel after you eat certain foods, this is going to help you have long-term success into finding out what, what food works for your bodies and what doesn't. The last point is you guys want to be able to understand your caloric needs. So again, I was telling Brandy, a very low calorie diet is going to be counterproductive to your end goals. It's not going to be, Lisa has firsthand experience with this and she's increased her calories where if you were eating 500 calories, this is just not sustainable. And then your body is going to rebel. So it's going to end up holding on to your weight and you're not going to lose weight. So you want to focus on nourishing your body as adequately, adequately as you can with those proteins, fats, and carbs. Again, these are all in the nutrition mo modules. And then the quality of food does matter more than the calorie count. So again, no good or bad foods. There are just going to be more nutritious foods and less nutritious foods for you. And then I want you guys to focus on, like you said, when you eat, let's say, you know, two slices of pizza versus something more nutritious, folk, think about how your body feels. And then this is going to help you make better choices down the line. And you want to all build, again, a sustainable approach. You can still enjoy yourselves at family parties. When you take vacations, there is a balance. But I'll tell you right now, coming from someone that has eaten healthy for the last 15 years or so, when you get, when you get your body used to eating nutritious foods, you're going to crave more nutritious foods. So I still have, I'm, I have a high sweet tooth and I still have my daily sweet treat. But for the most part, I eat nutritious meals because that's what my body craves. And that's what I want everyone um, to eventually get to. So, yeah.
Okay. Sorry, I thought I lost you guys. Are, are you guys good? I was I was trying to close out my windows and I was like, where did they go? And I didn't hear from you guys. Okay, so that's it for this session. You guys have your assignments for the next few weeks. Please keep me updated on Sunday. If you're up for it, Brandy, I would love for you to start tracking and send, whether you write it down or you start tracking on my fitness pal, send it to me by Sunday. Um, same thing with you, Lisa. I would love to see at least three days with 130 grams of protein. If you can make that work and then strength training, you guys have got your strength training assignments um, for the rest of the week. So let's see if we can get that in. And then any questions, you guys know how to get a hold of me. Yes. All right. Thank you all for coming. Have a good rest of the week. You too. All right. Bye.